This is episode number 24 of the Legit Podcast with myself, Tom Wickstead. Myself, Andy Grant. And this episode of the podcast is sponsored by Liverpool One. Um, the school holidays are fast approaching and Liverpool One are celebrating a summer of champions, uh, recognising parents that support on the sidelines, coaches that train and teach, players that participate and sports personalities that inspire the next generation. They're offering free fun activities throughout the summer with various events and activities, including a running track, sports coaching sessions and appearances from champions, including our very own Mr. Andy Grant. Whoop, whoop. Um, and to support uh, grassroots sports, they're giving 20 children's sports clubs the chance to each win £1,000 to help towards running costs, kits and equipment. They want you to share your victory celebrations. So whether that's a dab, the floss or robotics like Peter Crouch, uh, check out the Liverpool One website for more information. And a massive shout out to Liverpool One as well, because they've been really cool with us as um helping us sort of sponsor the podcast so this is uh this is really exciting for us and i feel as well sometimes when you hear podcasts being sponsored i always think when i hear them you think oh god that's just a the kind that doesn't really fit but with with the leg of podcast and for me personally when liverpool one wanted to sponsor it and they told us what it was about it was brilliant because yeah. it's about sport you know with me having alba you know she breaks up next week and already i'm thinking you know, what shall I do <laughs> for six weeks, you know, and she loves being outdoors anyway. So the fact that Liverpool want to host in this um, over the summer, it's going to be great for me to take her down there, get her active, get her running, running up and down. There's some celebrities, like you say, going to be there. Natasha Jonas. Yeah, um, yeah. She's you, going to be there, which would be great to see her. See, that's, uh, that's one thing that I'm, because I don't have a child, I don't mm. have to worry about over the six weeks and it's I think hard, to myself you know. sometimes as well like how difficult it's me it, how difficult it is for me to get time off work mm. like oh, how people mental. fucking manage over like I, I, six seven weeks during during mm. summertime and that's the thing as well why they're celebrating the mums and dads because do you know how hard it is to, to go to all the clubs after school and things like that I mean Alba she does gymnastics she does swimming and she does horse riding that's, you know, three nights a week and me and her mum are just constantly, you know, who's there picking her up, picking her up there and it's, yeah, it's yeah. a logistical nightmare sometimes. <clears throat> so the fact over the summer there's going to be loads of activities going on is great. Uh, like I say, I want to go down there, get involved on a few days of it. If any kids think that they can beat me or never mind kids, any teenagers <laughs> or adults think they can beat me, come down. And, and also I think the great thing what they're doing is, um, is, is the money that they're giving away to the yeah, sports yeah. clubs. I literally get messaged probably probably 10 times a month people asking for me to, to donate things whether it's memorabilia or, or do I know anyone who can get any, anything and a lot of the time it's to raise money for sports teams because of for the equipment yeah for, for, for kits yeah, for yeah, equipment yeah. and so the fact that there's a chance there for, for you know 20 sports clubs to win a thousand pounds it's brilliant because I know how much that you know can help out and the big thing I always talk about when I do the motivational talks in schools is just how important sport is mm -hmm. You know, it's all right having this healthy mindset and, you know, posting your ins inspirational quotes on Instagram and thinking, oh, I'm really motivational and I'm dead positive. Yeah. You've, you've got to be physically healthy as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and this is all about the next generation, the kids, keeping them into, sp getting them into sport. Is uh, Alba part of, oh, she's only young. I was going to ask if she's part of a sports club or anything. But well, she's just young, gymnastics, young, like you oh, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so gymnastics, um, she's just swimming. Oh, yeah, she's a really sporty kid. Always outdoors, always going to the park with the dog. Um, so yeah, she's she's super she's super into a sport, and it's that's why I think as well it'd be great for her to go down and see other kids like that yeah, because yeah. she's not really done a sports day because she's still in nursery, but it'd be great for her to to go down. Yeah, so definitely. It was exciting when Liverpool one came to us with this opportunity. I'm yeah. looking forward to. It. So to enter, teams need to create a victory celebration video to share with us. Um, like I mentioned, like Peter Kraut's robot, Mo Salah's yoga pose, or Bobby Firmino's eye cover. All roads lead. All roads lead back to Madrid and Champions of Europe. So, um, all the information it will be below this podcast anyway. So, um, mass shout out to Liverpool One. I fucking love Liverpool One as well. Like, do, the one thing, <laughs> one thing about Liverpool One, is it just feels so open. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I, I remember when it wasn't there, and you just the transformation now it is with Liverpool One. It's 
<laughs> it's unbelievable. I, I had, uh, there's one thing about places being open. I had a fucking big style panic attack one time in Victoria's Secrets in um, fucking um, Trafford Centre. Mm. I ate that place. I've never been in, you know, actually. Have you not? I don't think so, no. Second floor, right by the Apple store. Something about it. Don't get me wrong, it smells fucking gorgeous in there. What do you mean? There's something about it? <laughs> just there's something about that whole, like, I don't know, just like the traffic centre just like freaks the fuck out of me. What, as opposed to Liverpool being outdoors, you yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is. I think you're a bit of a weirdo there, Tom, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> I've never heard anyone <laughs> say that. Uh, nah, I love Liverpool one. Yeah, it's, it's great cool just what going round and um, like all the bars there, I think yeah. now as well. And the outdoor grass bit they've got up at the top. So yeah, I'm looking forward to being down there. So um, the website is www.liverpool-one.com slash win for clubs. So the link is below anyway. What would your celebration be if you were entered in this competition? Um, would you be making your own up or would you be mimicking? I'd be making my own up. I'd be freestyling. Really? Yeah. yeah. I used to love the good knee slide when I was playing footy. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I do? I, I like the uh, Wayne Rooney done it when he scored the overhead kick against Man City and David Beckham done it when he scored from the halfway line. And I like that kind of cockiness where you just kind of... Just lap it up. Yeah, just look at me. <laughs> but I think for this one, if you win in a £1,000, I think they're going to want something more than just standing there lapping it up. You're going to have to be creative. Right, yeah, so big up. Yeah, thanks Liverpool one, yeah. yeah. And mass shout out to um, Laura and Sharon as well. Yeah, that's the, exciting. The G's of Liverpool. And Je- I'm being serious. Anyone who thinks they can beat me in a run, come and have a go. Because I'm going to be down there. So, yeah, if anyone thinks they can uh, they can beat me, yeah, let's go for it. Right, mate. In other news, um, uh, our very own Mr. Grant. I, I do feel it, this is a little, this is going to be a podcast that's very much about you. But um, so you, you, um, Release that you're on Master Chef Celebrity. Master yeah, Chef. that's the other thing that's happening in the summer. Liverpool um, won the Summer of Champions. And let me just on get Master up. Chef. Um, so did do they? So that's not your. Can I can I just point out? I do not class myself as a celebrity. Number one, and number two, I do not class myself as a chef, as you will all see in due course. Okay, so let's it's just already get, been recorded, hasn't it? So yeah. It's all so fun, it all ha- so how it happened, how it came about. I'd done some corporate work with a few big banks and they released a series of motivational videos which were going around social media. Um, so yeah, these videos, motivational videos of, of me talking about setting goals and they, they were all done really well, the videos. So they were all plastered all over social media. Around about that same time, MasterChef must have been kind of looking for the next contestants. I'm sitting in my little cafe talking into a full English and I get a phone call and it's this woman and she says, hi Andy, I work for this production company and I'm just uh, w- want to know if you can, if you're free to chat for five, ten minutes. I said, yeah, okay. She said, what it is, is um, I work for the BBC on this next programme and I just want to know if you like to cook. So I said, yeah, you know, because I do like to cook. <laughs> that, but, you know what I mean? That, that doesn't mean you're good at it. That just means I like to do it. Yeah, yeah. So, all I do is me little Joe Wicks, 15, 30 minute meals. That's kind of about as far as I go. I cook a good roast dinner, but again, that's it. So I said, yeah, I'd like to cook. And she said, great, because I've just been looking at your social media and your website and, you know, you seem like quite a cool guy, be very interested in what you've been up to and stuff. And I've just seen one of these videos. I've been posted by, I think it was HSBC or something or Halifax. Um, I've come up on my Twitter and it was just a bit of a coincidence and I thought I would check it out and, and here I am talking to you. So I said, all right, thanks for the call. And um, she said, what is it? Celebrity MasterChef. And I was just like thinking, fuck it now, are you taking the piss? And um, she just explained about it and said, you know, was it something that you'd be up, to, up for? And I thought, you know what? It's it's funny. Like, and listen, I'll say yeah to anything, do you know what I mean? I like trying new things. So I just thought, go on, yeah, I'll give it a go. But I can't cook. Let me let me make that extremely. Is that what you clear. said to her? Yeah, well, I didn't tell her to say it to her. I said that. Well, I did. I said I'm not very good, and she was like, "Oh no, you'll be fine. You'll be fine." I think she was just scraping the bottom of the barrel, you know, and just like we've got no one else. Come on, you'll be fine. Um. So yeah, then I went down to London, done the film. I was only down there two days. Got paid a couple of got paid all right off it for, yeah, for I mean, two days work. Yeah, I'm saying. Um, and yeah. 
I don't think I don't know if I'm allowed to say much more. <laughs> no, don't no, don't do. No. no. Um None's the word, yeah. The people I was uh, the people I was on with were, were funny. You can say obviously who who they were and stuff like that. It's uh Yeah, so I, I, I was on with Neil Bullock Razor. He was a good laugh. Got yeah. on well with him, he's a nice guy, kept in touch with him since he was a good guy. Uh Oti, I was strictly coming dancing, yeah. kept in touch with her, she's really nice. Um Zonda Rhodes. She's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know Zandra was up until then. And, and then, was uh, it not awkward when you so you rock up at this? Where 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 do they film it? I don't know somewhere in London. Yeah, well, I so, you rock, so you rock up and um, do they get you all in like one like one room? You're in the green room, yeah. You're in the green room. So I walked in and straight away see Neil Ruddock, so I knew straight away who he was. So went over, shook his hand, and then I didn't recognise him. Zandra Rhodes. What did he say to you? It's like, right, mate, you're okay. Oh, right. Yeah. It's just, yeah. What do you do? And blah, blah, blah. No, no, he didn't no. ask me that at first. No, we just sat down and it was just a bit, are you all right? And everyone's Because I imagine nervous. that's a bit awkward. You know, when you're like under this umbrella of celebrity. Yeah, you kind of like, kind of like, do you know who I am type thing? Yeah, it's yeah. like, do, do you know who I am or do I know who you are? And it's all a bit, nobody was dead cool. He's just like, all right, mate, I'm Razor or Neil, whatever he said, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, mate, just dead, dead nice fella. And then I sat next, sat down to, Zandra Rhodes. Now, to be fair, they're probably looking at me thinking, who's he? But I was looking at Zandra thinking, you know, who are you? It turns out she's really lovely, really lovely woman. Got on really well with her. She's dead nice. And then uh, Oti walked in. And again, I didn't recognise Oti. I don't watch Strictly Comes Answer or anything like that. Um, but she was super nice. She's really cool. Dead funny. Got on really well with her. And then us four were sitting there and then um, and then Joey Essex walks in. <laughs> and, um, yeah, Obviously, just introduce myself to the more Andy and stuff, and then as the as the few days went on, you just find out a bit more about each other and stuff. And is it quite relaxed? Like yeah, yeah, super relaxed. Yeah, it? yeah, and all the all the production staff are really cool and dead helpful and and all that. And yeah, I, I don't think I can say we can probably obviously talk about it again when it gets yeah, aired, when it once but, it's, but, once um, it's, yeah, but yeah, yeah, all I can say was it was um, so yeah, they it was um, really fun. So they released the. Um, the like the can you call it a lineup? Yeah, yeah, yeah the lineup, right? It's and, been um, it's so been, what, it's what been happened? Funny. <laughs> yeah, so what happened? So this was this would have been. Well, um, they've been emailing me for ages saying like, oh, we're gonna, could you come on this show, the one show on this date? And I was like, no, I'm busy, you know, to promote it. Fucking hell, could get mm. yourself on the one show. I was busy when they asked me to do oh, it. Were you doing a talk? Mm. Done a talk, so I couldn't do it. Um, and then they're like, are you happy with this photo? Because you have to do like loads of little, you know pictures for the press so like they had me like you know holding like a spatula flicking up in the air and then like putting it and stuff like that all really cringeworthy stuff oh, um God. and then uh yeah so for the past couple of months they're saying like you know you can't tell anyone and stuff and yeah um we'll let so, you know when it's going to be released so it gets released like and they say right you're on it and this was like last thursday right mm. so the only reason I'm on your Twitter because um, there's some some good stuff on it. Oh, she deleted that. Go back up. Oh, did she? I don't got where it says this tweet oh, yeah, is Mama unavailable. Bear. She must have been getting a, so. So Master Chef put out this big thing. Let me um, find the Master Chef. Master Chef. Yeah, there's a the second one down. Yeah. Before that, no, just fit that one. Yeah. That one. So before you say this as well. Let, let it be clear as well. I, uh, like I said at the start, I'm, I'm really making this clear. I do not class myself as a celebrity, nor uh, do I class myself as a chef. I also couldn't give a fuck what people think of me in general, to be honest. Never mind on social media. But it was so funny looking at people's response to the lineup. And it was. Uh, this is it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah so that click it. that. It was <clears throat> it was mental. Oh, it's the guy, uh, that Thomas Sh- Shanafalaka Laka, the guy off um, the, the the who's the weather the weather presenter. Is he? Yeah. 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 To be fair, I don't know who half of them are. So I, to, to, left to right, that Adam. I don't know what he's off to you. No. Obviously, then there's me. Then that's Dillian White, the boxer. Dom, is he cool? A, I never met him. You didn't me- meet him. No. I can't say much more. Oh, You're gonna yeah, end up yeah. making me say something I shouldn't yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Um, that Dommy's off goggle box <laughs> like wasn't Ben Webb for the team, Andy. <laughs> yeah, Ben. Shout out to Ben Webb. He's a um, big supporter. Um, 
Yeah, so Dr. Alex, he was off Love Island, wasn't he? Elizabeth, don't know her. Greg Rutherford, know him. Jenny, don't know her. Joey Essex, obviously, yeah. J- Josie, don't know what she's off. Jules, don't know him. Kelly, don't know oh, her. Oh, d- fucking Judge Jules. It's the Is DJ, it? yeah. Martha, don't know her. Mim, don't know him. Obviously, Razor, OT. Ricky, don't know him. The weather presenter. It's weather, and then Vicky Patterson, and obviously Sandra. So to be fair, I didn't know half of them. But what made me laugh was how many people are like deeply offended by not knowing who they are and like, you know, so I just quoted and re- retweeted a few of them just for a laugh. Here's Linda. Linda, wow, definitely scraping the bottom of the barrel of this lot. <laughs> Out of the Z list as I, I know for, only shocking, only shocking that you can call most of these people celebrities when they are really nobodies, to be honest. See, God, now, she's going fucking... She's gone in, hasn't she? She's gone balls deep with that. But it's like a bunch of nobodies. I felt like saying, can I love Royal Marine Commander with you? And then some guy called Gary Jacko's put celebrities question mark. I don't know. I don't know, but I know for sure that Andy Grant is certainly a, not a nobody. When was the last time you became a Royal Marine you Commander? Go, boom. Had your leg blown off and ran a marathon with just long leg just for the fucking hell See, of it. thanks, Gary. And it was nice because there was loads of people supporting me like that. Now, I didn't, I didn't do it to kind of go at that Linda or there's a few of them. But I just thought, like, what, you know... Thankfully, I'm not a celeb and I don't get all the abuse on Twitter that I guess some people do. But um, you wonder why people don't check. Like, oh, celebrities don't constantly yeah, check. Because, yeah. you know, all the shit that you get. Like, thankfully, again, none of it was to me personally. But the amount of people going like, God, just a bunch of nobodies and no marks and this and that. And I was just like, bloody hell, this is... And then he put a good, re- really nice reply there. That's not the point. The point is about being called a nobody. We're all a somebody. Um, is it fucking true that really mm. someone was quite funny I posted on my Instagram story someone uh, <laughs> someone put <laughs> called me a nobody and a no mark or something and I put wow I've went from being a uh, you know a Royal Marine Commando to a fastest amputee in the world to a nobody and a no mark in one morning and then the guy must have like clicked on me and, he, and then he, he sent a tweet saying I apologise Andy you know I, yes, well, I didn't like kind of you know, yeah it was nice of him to apologise but I'm not offended by any of it but it was more just it saddened me a bit though, like I'm getting a bit deep, but like it is only celebrity mastership. But on a deeper level, I thought there's people in the world who are like that offended or that pissed off that they're gonna spend, you know, a minute smashing their thumbs out, writing this 140 character tweet to like go, fucking hell, you're not a celebrity, you're not worthy of my TV time because yeah, you are yeah. not a celeb. Get off my TV. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, fuck, surely yeah. there's, surely there's more Mate, important you, things going um... on. Without meaning to like um, blow smoke up your ass, but like if you just take a step back for a second, right, and you think about it, like how you've gone from like building up this platform of this sort of like personal brand of Andy Grant, etc., and everything you've been through to then being on TV, like it's all right, whether you like the show or not, but still, regardless, you made your way onto a TV show with other people, like. Don't it's like it's it. yeah, it's fucking well done. Do you know what I mean? No, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's. But I mean, you know what? I always think of it. Think of it as this. You know, I can sit there. And I, I can moan every single day that I lost my career in the Marines. I lost my leg. I lost the life that I loved. I could wake up every morning and have a beer in my bonnet and think this is shit. And don't get me wrong. Some days I do feel like that. Or I can think, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna take advantage of every opportunity that comes my way. I'm gonna live my life to the fullest. And I'd be a hypocrite because I talk all the time in my motivational talks. I use the quote, life is 10% the situation you find yourself in, 90% what you do about it. Yeah. Now that patrol in 2009, that equates to 10% of my life. What I've done since is the 90. You know, I wake up every morning as an amputee. That's again, equates to 10% of my day. 90% of it is what I do with the day. So yeah, I me, mean, I've just jumped at every opportunity. I've tried to get out there, spread the word, that you know you can overcome tough times and you can live your life and thankfully with the documentary of us out and the book and then the odd TV show, it it's been good to to show people and that you know you can get through tough times and if if you yeah, get, yeah. if you get called a celeb or a non celeb or a Z list or whatever it may be, that's that's by the by that's not really part of it. I mean, I just I just think that I've I've been lucky enough to have some good people around me and have helped guide me along the way and it's given me this platform now that you say where I can hopefully try and try and do something good with it. Mm. 
like 10 years like I, I imagine if you'd think like if I said to you <clears throat> mate 10 years 6 months or however long it uh, yeah six, uh, well yeah 6 months that you'd be on like yeah. well when I recorded it I think it was 10 years I recorded it in February I think I'm mm. sure it was so again I'm thinking I'm standing here with Neil Woods are cooking up a bloody storm <laughs> 10 years ago I was lying in a coma fucking mad isn't it it's mad do you, do you ever do you worry do you, do you sort of worry about like not not like you're overexposing yourself but like are you ever conscious that like I don't want to come across as like I'm trying to be famous not not that you are mate but like yeah do, do, um, do, you people, know, like, people probably think that I am though I've got no doubt that people will go, fucking hell, he's everywhere. He, he, <laughs> he, he must be trying to do this. And he's got a fucking podcast. Yeah. Like, stop him out of the People podcast. will no doubt think, fucking hell, what's he, you know, why is he da- trying to do all this stuff? And being completely honest, I'm sitting there talking into me full English after I've just walked the dog and someone gives me a phone call, says, do you want to be on MasterChef and they're going to pay you this much? Fuck I yeah. went, what have I got to do? Go and fucking cook something on TV and you're going to give me that? Okay, yeah, it sounds. You tell me anyone who wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. It's not as if I'm, I'm selling my soul. It's like I'm sitting there. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. I'm not doing anything else that day and someone says, do you want to go on MasterChef? Yeah, yeah, 100%, mate. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's not, as, it's not as if I've got an... I've not, I've not even got an agent. I've not got an agent pushing me forward for this stuff. Someone approached me directly and said, do you want to go on it? So I said, yeah, fuck it. Would you ever get an agent or anything like that? Or? I don't, nah, I just no. do it all myself, I think, yeah. yeah. I'm not like... I'm not, it's, I'm not in demand that much. People <laughs> do, you know... Um, and again, so I think people who know me will know that I'm not that. I mean, to be fair, you've, you've got to use it to your advantage as well. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes for some, obviously MasterChef's not really one of those things, but... You're getting paid for it, mate. And look, we've all got bills to pay, haven't we? Do you know what I mean? So fuck it. The MasterChef thing was one, it'll be funny. I thought it'll be a laugh. Like, yeah, I can't cook, so this will be funny. Like, do you know what I mean? And the second thing, I was getting paid for it. So, yeah. pff, that yeah. was the that was the only reason for MasterChef. It wasn't to try and raise my profile in that sense, nothing like that. Um, and you know what? There should be more people that they class as like celebrities that you know similar to yourself, <laughs> rather than people so, being known for fucking just being known. You know. In the same week that this went out, and people people are slagging the show, going loads of Z-listers. That same week, I've got a mate who's just who lost both his legs, and he's just hand cycled from John O'Groats to Land's End and broke the, broke the world record Gee. by like two days or something like that. Now, he is worthy more than going on that TV show than, than other, other people on there, do yeah, you know what yeah. I mean, in that sense. So it's not it's not anyone's fault who went on there that some are more famous, famous than others. I think the bigger problem is is this whole, you know, culture of what is famous and is, is, is being a celebrity a, a worthy thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean... Kim the Kardashian, way- you know, she's famous because she she released a, a sex tape. Is that it, yeah, yeah? Is that a thing to be famous for? Wasn't it? and she was Paris Hilton's. Um, yeah, Paris like, Hilton's me, wasn't she? Yeah. Or you've got a lad there who's just been blown up and has, has just broke a world record by hand cycling. Uh, yeah, yeah. John Gross like, to yeah, Land's yeah. End. Who's more worthy there? If you're going to give anyone TV time, I know who I'd rather see. Yeah, hundred percent. Weird thing with fame as well, it's like once that you can never reverse it. No. Do you know what I mean? It's like once you've gone over that air, it's like, all right, you can you can be skin one day and then be rich the next and then you can be back to skin or mm. you can be rich one day, you can be skin, but you can never like no. once you've gone past that line and people start to recognise you know you yeah. and people start asking for photos. You can't it's say like, like can, I don't want to be famous you, anymore, yeah, can you? Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is so fucking weird the way that you just can't like mm. you can't like reverse engineer it. They're like, no, I've decided on the thirteenth of July this year I yeah. don't want to be famous anymore. That's me done. And it's it's a weird thing because I mean I, I'd fucking hate it. I would absolutely hate it. I tell you what, when we went to um, Jazza Dickens' fight last night, so big mm. up to um, Jazza for winning yeah. that because it was a quality well done, fight. Mate. And uh, Tony Bellew was there. And um, I feel like we've talked about this a lot, but um, he was, people were constantly walking past, weren't they, for photos? And he's like, and he was trying to watch the fucking fight. There was a mm. fight going on during that. And I was looking, I was thinking, oh, I tell you what, sometimes I do like, I don't envy that. No. I mean, and so it's nice, I think, like, someone asked me for a photo, said they yeah, read yeah, the yeah. book, said they read the book and asked for a photo, which is lovely if it happens once. 
Like, you know, that's a lo- it's, it's a, such a nice thing for someone to go, <clears throat> mate, read your book, inspirational, mate, fucking cried all the way through, but absolutely loved it. Can, do you mind if I get a quick photo? That for me, I'm like, that's amazing. Like, it makes me feel so good. <clears throat> I always text Phil who wrote the book and I say, Phil, mate, thank you so much, mate. You, we've affected so many people. We're having such an impact on people's lives with this book. Same with the podcast. People say they listen to the podcast. It's, it's amazing. They might ask for a photo. That's lovely. It's like you say, when you step over that line and there's just a fucking stream of people just but, and a also, photo. They don't even say anything, like, they don't even say anything to... And look, I'm guilty. When I got that photo with the Real Madrid player, I just said, Danny, can I get a photo? He went, yeah. I took the fucking photo, selfie. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went, cheers, mate. Yeah. And he went, you're welcome. There was no like, oh, mate, you know what? Yeah, he, yeah. You know, or there was no like conversation yeah. at all. Whereas exactly last night, it was it was people lining up to literally go bang, yeah. to then send in the WhatsApp. And you know what? They got if, a photo if you're with. honest with yourself as well, what would feel better if you went over and said, Tony Bell, you can have a quick photo, took the photo. Or if you never had your phone and, and you, you went over and you said, all right, Tony, can I just say, mate, I'm a massive fan. Uh, I loved when you won the world title. No doubt he'd probably go, oh, mate, thanks for that, mate. I really appreciate it. Rather than being like a, an, a piece of art. That, like, yeah. And let's yeah. just say you'd had 30 seconds and he had a, you had a couple of back and forths with him. Okay, you never got your photo, but I guarantee you'd feel better Yeah, yeah. walking away. I, um, I saw, do you ever remember a guy called Charlie Borman? No, no. He um. Uh, did you ever watch Long Way Down with Hugh McGregor or Long Way Round? I was already went around the world on, on, on the motorbike. On the motor, motorbike, yeah. yeah. Well, I saw Charlie Borman. He was so Charlie Borman went with Hugh McGregor mm. route. So they did a long way round, uh, which was from London to New York, heading east, and then they did long way down. Yeah, I, I didn't watch it, but I do remember it, it happening. Yeah. It was really long way round was so much better than long way down. <clears throat> um, just it was, it was just sort of more adventurous and it wasn't as rushed but I saw Charlie Borman in Mallorca when I was like 16 and I remember fucking shitting myself mm. and I did that exact same thing I just went I literally just tapped him on the shoulder and went Charlie can I get a photo I just had the photo and walked away and I thought to myself I wish I'd just had a fucking conversation yeah, because yeah. just anything like oh mate I really enjoyed Long Way Down Long, you know, yeah what was this way, like or what was yeah, your favourite yeah, what bit? was that bit like it was really yeah and he was with his Kevin missing. Hart does a little bit on the Joe Rogan podcast when he talks about it I think we might have spoke about this before, but he says, you know, and he says himself, and he's super famous, obviously, he says he's much rather people go, you know, shake his hand and just enjoy that moment of two people meeting and being like, hey, you know, I'm a fan. I love this joke. I loved you here. I saw you here. It, it, you know, that really rather than just this kind of yeah, in your yeah, face, in you your know, face, yeah. it's like, what's, you lo- you, you're losing that human connection of just, you know, two people. Yeah. Just, just for the sake of a photo, mm. you can wank. And, and, then, and then ultimately, why, like, it's like, without meaning to go so fucking deep here, but like, for example, like, why did I get that photo with the Real Madrid player? Mm. Was it because, like, I could then put it online and and then in my head I thought, so people could well, go, people, yeah. th- people thought that Tom was staying in a nice hotel that a Real Madrid fucking mm. player stays at. Or was that, do you know what I mean? Because I don't really, like, I'm not a massive fan. I don't yeah, really, yeah. I don't support Real Madrid. Mm. Um, yeah, that's the bigger question, is it? What is the real intention for people wanting to be seen with this person yeah. in a certain place? Yeah, yeah. Big Bucks Wickstead staying with all the Real Madrid players. Yeah, it's a good point, yeah. Do you know what I mean? What, what was the reason then you posted there? Just got a photo with a Real Madrid player. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, but you, you don't yeah. usually see a Real Madrid player, do you? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Do you think there are people then that would maybe would look at you and go, "Fucking hell, he's money bag staying in the same hotel as." Yeah, but it, it, it maybe, but it wasn't that expensive. But it's, funny, honest, that, it, it's funny though how people would would. It's interesting you said that, yeah, because people. It's a bit like you said there about me and this as Master Chef thing. Would people view that and think, "Fucking hell, he's just trying to get famous." Or, or people view you there and go, fucking hell, is he, he's showing off there being with a Real Madrid player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When actually the intentions for you was just like, fucking hell, a Real Madrid player, I get a photo. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was like, well, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, you know, like like last night, you know, oh yeah, I was just at a boxing match where yeah, Tony Bell, you was there. <coughs> mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I think there's more than just, do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I was gonna. What was I gonna say then? I think as well. I mean, I done it the other day actually with Bruce Grobbler. I seen him, and um, but I, I, I had a little conversation with him beforehand, and after he was going on LFC TV, and I said, "Oh, you going on LFC TV and stuff?" And we had a little chat about football, and then I said, "Can I grab a quick photo?" But for me, that's because I'm a you know big Liverpool fan. He's won a European Cup, and I thought it'd be cool to get a photo. And there was no one around, so I didn't feel as bad. But I'd hate to be in a position where you were... I just think you lose... You lose your life, really, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Like, you said that guy on holiday. You said he was just getting hammered all the time, He was getting hammered, yeah. Yeah. And then the Americans going, who the goddamn's that guy? Really, yeah. Yeah. To be fair, I was thinking to myself, why would you come here? Why would you come here, mate? But they've got to go somewhere. They've got to go somewhere, you're right. And, like... But just, and that's uh, the thing. It's like you know, why should you not be allowed to? I seen a re- this is this is where it gets weird as well. You talk about I love I love our chats on social media because <laughs> I just find it so fascinating. So do I. Because it dominates everything, really, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. So here's a weird one, and we're gonna. She's um we we were with her last night at Jazz's fight. Molly McCann, meet Paul Molly, a UFC fighter. She's coming on the pod. So I was. This is fucking weird. This this is. Uh, it was so it was so cringe really <laughs> and made me feel so awkward. So I was chatting to Molly because we've got a few mutual friends and um so me and I were just having a chat. As in just a normal human human chat, like two normal people having a chat. Some guy comes over and says, All right, Molly, can you sign these gloves? And Molly was dead nice. Yeah, of course, mate, yeah, yeah. Signed the gloves. He says, Can I get a photo? She said, Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Again, super nice. He says, I've got this on Instagram here, I, uh, I follow you. And she went, oh, nice. She went, thanks for the support. You know, brilliant. And he went, yeah, uh, you couldn't follow us back, could you? <laughs> and Molly went, Molly looked at me and I'm just going like, what, like what? this fella's, a, I'm talking like a 40-year-old man. A grown man. Grown man standing there with his memorabilia. He's had, he's had his photo, he's got his signed gloves. And he's a 40-year-old man saying to Molly, can you follow me back? <laughs> and she went, uh, and he's like gets a fo- phone out and she's like oh, what's your name and he and, and she and I'm there <laughs> going she do like, it? yeah she done it because she? like she's being nice wasn't she yeah, yeah, yeah but I'm like mate a grown well, why man are you why asking. are you what are you getting what what is he gaining oh, from that God hey what no genuinely what what what's he gaining from that well he's gaining um it's just it's, I don't know it's it's more a case of so that. Probably, if anyone looks at his profile, who also knows it, you, he I, can you, say that, that she is, follows him, and then people go, "Well, why does why does Meatball Molly follow fucking John?" Does John? anyone to do that, mate? There'll be, yeah, of course, people will think that, yeah. People will go on his profile and well, go, probably, "Wow, yeah." He's... But say, why? I wonder why? Why start? Why? Why does? There's, I think, there's a mental, yeah, health problem there, like the fact that he he wanted that so much so that people could look at him and go, "Ooh." That would be the reason, yeah. Unless he wants to then direct message her or something, I don't know. But Slide into the DMs. But, um... It, mate, it was just the most awkward, cringeworthy thing I've witnessed. And I just felt so sad for this Molly, like she's... The, the nice person. She's yeah, she's just been the... super nice, doing, you know, and then she gets this really awkward thing. It's just like... Mm. It's fucking mad, isn't it? And it's because it happened there in front of me. I was just like... <laughs> oh, awkward. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it was, it was weird. It was so it was a quality night last night. It was a good laugh, wasn't it? So Tom Tom turned up. Um What was that pub that um Oh yeah, I took Tom to Bootle to uh had a pint with me and my dad. The principal. No the, the uh, Pacific. Pacific Pacific yeah, my local. And um so Tom turns up in a suit. Because <laughs> most... it's a boxing night. Yeah, but I've been to the Olympia a few times and it's just kind of jeans and a t shirt and jacket, whatever. Tom rocks up in a suit with the most overdressed man in there. I did think when I was rocking up that, no, dis- like, I like a pub's a pub, do you know what I mean? And now I'll go anywhere. But it's a rough pub I, in When Bruno. I was looking up, I was like, is this the right fucking pub here? Because I don't want to walk Tom's used to this. all these nice little country pubs in Wigan. <laughs> and I bring them to the fucking the Pacific in Bootle. Yeah, so we had a couple of pints with my dad. And then we jumped a taxi and we up to the Olympia. Tom then realised he was overdressed. But you cracked on. And we yeah, had a good night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had a uh, bumped into Molly, so she's coming on the pod, which was cool. Yeah, um, you were funny at the end when when Jazza won his fight, and Tom's going, um, "Mate, let's go and have a word with him." I'm like, "Mate, he's got about <laughs> a thousand people wanting to speak to him," and you're going, "No, come on, it'll be sound. Let's go." 
he's just he's doing an interview on TV and you're going, come on, we'll go and chat to him. I was like, mate, we're not <laughs> getting near him. him. Let's leave him. Oh god. Um, but he won. You know what I didn't get? I'm gonna have to I wonder ask if him. the um, the fights on uh, on YouTube. I'd love to have him back. Love to get him back on. Oh, we should definitely get yeah, him back yeah. on to talk about the fight. Yeah, mate. Um, it was why, on ESPN, wasn't it? Yeah. Why was it? Um, no, that's him, isn't it? There, yeah. Oh, mate, there he is. So why his is he? Why was he fighting for the European against title? an Australian? Yeah, I, I don't didn't know. understand that. But I seen on his um, on his Instagram story, he's got a nice black eye. Mate, you don't realise how hard they are. They're like, fucking... How they're, fast as well. They're, they punch. they're rapid. Mm. They are rapid. And, and like, when you see... <clears throat> when... You know, you see him without his T-shirt on, you think, oh, like... You know, if you just saw him in this on holiday, right? And mm. you saw Jezza on holiday, just by the beach, with his mm. top off, with shorts on, you just think... I just like just normal sort of maybe not normal but like you know all right he's keeps, in shape. Yeah, yeah, keeps yeah. in shape yeah yeah compared to some people who you see who obviously just go to the gym you know just yeah, yeah. you know and then how fucking quick he moves oh, and just like the power is just insane it's like lads in the gym none of them are huge big beef heads but it's, it's a boxing gym and oh my god I would not like a slap off any of them they're all fit lads, don't get me wrong, but they're all kind of like my size. They're not like huge, they're just like normal size lads. But you see them on the pads and you're like, how are you moving that quick and generating that much force in such a small small space? Just so quickly, like... And it's scary when someone knows how to punch properly and the technique and it's... Yeah, it's mental. If they got in... if Yeah, I wonder if they got in... If he, for example, if Jazz got into a fight just... By it, like pure coincidence, as in like trying to protect himself or under. Mm. Are, they, are they allowed to go full fucking pellet? Or Aren't they classed as lethal weapons if you're a I professional boxer? I remember reading this somewhere. I don't think it's true that. Is it not? No. We can find out. Yeah, no, nah, I'm sure if a boxer... I remember right when, when I joined the Marines and they give you this um, brief, like week one, day one, and they say, look, when you go out into Exeter, you know, don't go scrapping, don't go fighting, because there's a load of people in Exeter who just love to pick fights with recruits going through training I guess it must be you know why as a guess it must be because you know you've got these you all these lads rocking up every two 60 lads every two weeks turn up to Exeter to try and become a Royal Marine Commando 32 weeks later so they're obviously the this is just my opinion maybe a bit of jealousy or something yeah. like all these you know young lads are coming down aspiring to be these, these commandos these elite they probably all think they're better than us and stuff. And if we ever see them having a beer, we want to have a fight. I don't know. There's always a bit of trouble that goes on down there. Anyway, we had this brief and warned us about this. And they were like, be careful. Because one thing that the solicitors will say is, you know, if I ever had a fight with a civilian and, and battered the civilian or whatever, you'd get done more and they, the law would come down harder on you because they, they'd use the, the kind of reasoning of he's a trained killer. You know, really? he's he's a Royal Marine Commando. You know, that's what they teach there. You know, they teach you how to kill people. So he's assaulted, you know, my client on a night out. He's a train, and it's like, fucking well, hell, yeah. you know, week one day in the Marines, you're not learning how to fucking, you know, you're not doing underwater knife fighting, you know, week <laughs> one day on. But yeah, that whole thing of, you know, same with a boxer, his hands are lethal weapons, a Marino. And so you, you, you kind of got a warning saying, you know, if you do end up having a fight, you know, the law will be a bit harder on yeah, you if it was just two civilians. So it says, uh, so I typed into Google, is a boxer class as a lethal weapon? And they put the idea that bo professional boxers or any other martial artists slash combat athletes, for that matter, are required to register their hands as lethal weapons <laughs> is a complete myth. <clears throat> it's a silly boast that some fighters use to exaggerate their own ability. I definitely did. That must have been a joke. But like you go like this is you know zero zero one two. This is zero zero one three or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. But yeah, I can I can see where that comes from when uh, when they just say look. Well, and also you're... don't don't not to give you know us a bad name down there. You know, if all the bars are like, oh, fucking hell. Like, it's constant scraps every Friday and Saturday night. Mm. You know. 
Yeah, but I, I didn't get into any fights when I was down there, but I do know that there has been trouble over the years and stuff, and, and yet there are groups. You know, what? I've never been in a fight. What? Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. I've never been on a fight on a night out, ever. Really? Ever. I've never. Had loads of fights, me. Never? Just, just... I just, I'm not an aggressive person when I get pissed and nor do it does anything really wind me up and nor have I really wound anyone up there is a, there was a time where I did get smacked but then um, it was for it was for something that I couldn't couldn't possibly say on this but. and you didn't retaliate? no there was like six of them fucking legged it you got to pick your fight haven't you? <laughs> yeah I suppose yeah I'm a fucking agile quick runner <laughs> 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 I'm getting there like that that was in Leeds actually Oh. But yeah, mate, I've never been there. I've never. I went and also, I've, ne- I've, ne- the- I've got friends, right? And they always seem to fuck it. They always, not anymore, because I think you start to sort yeah. of grow, you know. You know. Mm. Um, I had friends who used to always get themselves in. And I just, I like, I just see them next morning, like, just either wound up because they're like, fuck it, I wish I'd just done something differently yeah. and I'd been able to, or blah, blah, blah. Mm. Or, and I just never, like, I just never understood, like, I just. I'm it not, ruins your fucking night out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, have, yeah. It's hundred percent. It's yeah. It's not worse than having a fight. I've had, I've, I've had a few, but none that I'm proud of. I think it's fucking stupid, especially after a beer. I remember once in school, and you kind of, you know, my dad said to me, you know, don't let anyone, you know, um, stand all it like yeah, stand yeah, up for yourself type yeah, thing. Yeah, and up, yeah. I don't know if I told you this story, but I was in the dinner queue. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Some then ended up just having a, in. yeah pushed in. I said, you know, let's go and have a fight, and that was probably probably one of my first fights. But then on, on night out and stuff like that, I think the scary thing now is all the knives and people coming out with knives on a night out and you think, what the fuck is that? Like, yeah, yeah. It, it's ridiculous. I'd never ever have another fight now, you know. But. I want the only the only other t- the only other time when it's sort of come near is when um, I'll say I'm not bothered. Is when um, back in I mean this is the stupidity that I had was. I think this would have been two thousand. So I would have. I turned eighteen in two thousand and ten. So this would have been two thousand and eleven. Went on the Halloween night out in Liverpool, um, dressed as a suicide bomber. <laughs> and I kid you not, mate. I had the plasticity. Like this is fucking stupid. Why is it stupid? I, well, because I had the full. Imagine, like, because I got the train there. <laughs> yeah, but it's clearly fancy dress. But, but I had the full plaster scene, like yeah, um, yeah. everything. I had uh, when I used to paint, like paintball, and there was like um, a camo, like you know where it's got the, like the belt thing round, and it's like a web thing at the back. Mm-hmm. I had that with the plaster scene attached, with uh, old PS2 wires coming out, and that's good. I know it's cool. Yeah. Why were you? I just I think people thought it was a little bit. Bit too far. Yeah, a bit too far. I'm surprised the police didn't have a word. Like, like it looked legit. Yeah, yeah. Like, completely legit. That's just a good. That's a good effort. Um, but no, I've never. Um, I've got no interest either, and never even. Like even I know, like friends who used to never have the back to like always have, you know, in a pub. Mm. Like there'd be um, some work colleagues. Whenever they walk into the pub, they make sure that. Would it back be? to the wall or something? Yeah, yeah. That or they can see the whole. Like, I've never like really. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, always. Oh fuck that! I just got get get a good spec next to the bar. Me, I couldn't get yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. No, I I definitely went through a phase though where I kind of well, well, I've never ever like initiated a fight in my life, but I'd always be the one kind of for a long time. I'd just walk away if there was ever any hint of trouble. I would have just walked away, but then I joined the Marines. And I guess it just gave me the confidence, not to be a bully, because again, I've never started a fight in my life, but rather than maybe before I'd walk away, I'd, I'd, I'd kind of be like, look, if you want to start something, I'll finish it then. Yeah, yeah. So then it became a bit more confrontational in the sense of rather than I'd walk away, definitely went through a few years where it was like, okay, then if it's going to go off, then yeah, I yeah. can handle myself now. So let, let's And then there's always the thing, like there was someone at our workplace was it our workplace? Or anyway, a friend, someone, and someone who someone knows anyway, who's uh, I think he's in jail now. Um, it's the classic hit someone, fell on the curb. Yeah, and uh, I had a friend that happened to passed passed away. Yeah, yeah, I had a friend that happened to really sad story. And again, I think as you get older, you just realise it's not worth it. Like yeah. it is so not worth it. Be like, like it's not, you know. 
you know, people, if someone barged into it, like... Yeah, that's the thing. That, you know, because you know, people are drunk, right? Why, why did that, why did it, why did the fight kick off? Well, because... Because he just fell in. He spilled so, a drink or something. Yeah, it's like, mm. like pissed. Like, I remember I had, I had a confrontation, let's say, in, the, in Benidorm. I remember chatting to some girl and she was on the dance floor and I, I, I said something to her and um, she turned around and answered me, whatever. I can't remember what I asked her or not, something, something like completely normal. And then this guy <laughs> turned around and went, mate, what the fuck are you doing talking to me, girlfriend? And I went, sorry, mate, I didn't know it was your missus. You know, apologise. Not that I'd even said anything anyway. Yeah, like, yeah. But, and he, taught, yeah. he was obviously pissed and just went, I went, sorry, mate. And he went, well, don't fucking do it again. And again, at the time, I was like, well, don't start gobbling up. I've said I'm sorry, don't like... That's when he starts and to like... When, and then he goes, what? And then I yeah, go... Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then before yeah. you know it, there's a big fight. There's a, there's a scrap involved, yeah. Yeah, and you just think over what? Like, <clears throat> what was that even? It's, it's, it's stupid, and, yeah. yeah. It's stupid and uh, it's not big and it's not clever. So yeah, um, when you when you do see as well, when you do go into the gyms and you see proper boxers who know what they're doing, you think, fucking hell, like... I'm, I'm, and I'm sure they like stay well away from fights or anything like that. Yeah, they, you can't imagine yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Especially there on nights out or anything like that. Not no. that they go on nights out, really, I suppose. I was just no. thinking last night when we were, I was watching Jazza, I was thinking, when he was fighting, I was like, all that hard work, all that not drinking, like, because mm. he doesn't drink, does he? No. All those, like, y- you know, everything just for that mm. 10 minutes, 12 minutes, however long it was. Mm. Yeah. It's insane. Well, 30 minutes. 30 minutes, yeah. yeah. Mm. On that, me, have you found, or do you know anyone, I think it's becoming a more and more of a trend not drinking. I know quite a few people now who haven't drank in over a year. Uh, yeah, I know uh, my f- one of my best mates, his wife doesn't drink and hasn't drank for a long time now. Um, do you think you could give it up? I love a good brewski. Love... I, I I I know I couldn't. Not I that couldn't I'm know. not that I'm an alcoholic or anything, but no, I couldn't. Just I just like I actually do genuinely enjoy having a pint sometimes. I do, yeah. You know, I couldn't I couldn't give it up. I do. I know what you mean though. I think there are a few more people that are starting to. It's maybe, a bit. It's um, a bit like a vegan thing. You know, it was cool to be a vegan. Now it's cool. You know, it's it's almost cool not to be on social media sometimes. Have you met? I've met a few few people like that. Yeah, you're just not on. Yeah, my dad. Yeah. <laughs> I met a girl and uh, she's not on anything. And I think that's like a cool thing now. Yeah, yeah. I th- but when you ask, you're like, what? Yeah, it's like, whoa, hang on. You're not Wait, on Instagram, nothing? Twitter. Don't do anything. Um, so- I couldn't I couldn't give up drinking, nor would I want to. The only thing that I do sometimes think is obviously the next morning is, or the next day, is if I've really gone heavy, is I do feel really nervous. Oh, be a fear. I don't know what, yeah, just really or what nervous. what you've done the night before. Not necessarily what I've done the night before, just just a ner- just a nervousness. Really? Yeah, it's weird. An anxiety type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But, but nothing to I've, do with what you will have done the night before. No. Sometimes you do think though, don't you? It's, yeah. It's, it, it like it comes over like in a dark mist of like Dread. Jesus of like yeah. fuck. Like even I don't want to turn my phone on. Oh, I yeah. don't want to see any photos. Yeah. That's it's just the conversations you've had. I always think are like, oh god, what did I say to yeah, him or her? It's so cringy, isn't it? Yeah. I, I would love, the only thing I'd love to change about drinking is I'd love to be able to drink to a point where you were kind of, it was cool, and then just stay at that level. Carry on drinking, because I enjoyed the taste of it and stuff, and it's, it's but just stay at that drunk level. Mm. And and that level would be not to the point where you can't remember anything. Because a big thing I always hate is is not remembering the night. Sometimes yeah. you have such a laugh, and the next day you've drank too much, and you're just like, I can't even remember getting home. Yeah. I can't remember this, I can't remember that. So... But even, but it's a whole like, you know, we 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 mock alcohol or at least say it's bad and stuff like that. But like, it fucking brings incredible nights. Yeah, it brings it, people it together. Like, it brings people together. It's mm. an incredible networking tool if you, yeah. um, you know, from business or whatever, or even meeting new people. I, I don't know. Again, I've mentioned this story on the podcast, but I went I used to go out and uh, do a bit of skiing in. Uh, cloisters or clusters however you want to say it, in Switzerland it's very well to do out there very posh it's where the royal family go and a charity I was involved with um, used to go out there and do a bit of skiing and um, 
when I went out there, they had like all these big investment bankers and the charity wanted these people to basically back the charity. And because I'm quite a social person and I like having a beer and stuff and I'm a real people person, they had me with all these bankers and I had them, I was doing a headstand, drinking a pint of beer whilst on my head, you know, getting all these people drinking and stuff. And the, the charity was like that to me. Yeah, you stay with them and, you know, have, have a good time with them and stuff. And it was all, it was all great. And again, it was down to beer, you know, beer yeah, bringing that yeah, people together, yeah, yeah. bringing that atmosphere bringing all these bankers that I would never have met before on our table, all drinking together, skiing together, having a great time, supporting the charity. And again, it's like, if you didn't have beer involved, yeah, you yeah. know, how would you have, how would you facilitate yeah, that yeah, kind 100%, of mate, yeah. that thing? So, yeah. Right, I think we best shoot anyway, because... Um, we're, we're doing a Joe Rogan style day today, aren't we? We've got a couple of podcasts lined up. Yeah, yeah. So, um, just to finish as well, um, obviously, this podcast is sponsored by Liverpool One. Um, so the school holidays are fast approaching. Liverpool One are celebrating a summer of champions, recognising parents that support on the sidelines, coaches that train and teach, players that participate, and sports personalities that inspire the next generation. They're offering free, fun activities throughout the summer with various events and activities, including running track, sports coaching sessions, and appearances from champions, including our very own Andy Grant. And to support uh, grassroots sports, they're giving 20 children's clubs the chance to each win £1,000 to help towards running costs, kit and equipment. So they want you to share your victory celebration videos. So whether that's um, the dab, the floss or floss or robotics like Peter Crouch. And he's just uh, announced his uh, retirement, hasn't he? He has, Fucking, yeah. There was a cracking goal on them. He knows overhead kick. Mm. What a goal that was. The Champions League it was as well. Was it? Yeah. Um, so check out the Liverpool One website for more information. And the website, if I can grow it here, is www.liverpoolone.com slash win for clubs. Yeah, thanks for listening to the pod. Thanks for supporting it. Pass the message on. And look forward to speaking to you all again soon. Instagram, the Leg It podcast. Twitter, the Leg podcast. Mm-hmm. Um... YouTube channel as well. Leave a review. Subscribe. Boom. Piece of piss as usual. (laughs)